in a nutshell, can you tell us how you're able to do this? I understand that you're analy able to identify objects and then encrypt uh, things that might be private, like faces, even license plates, you were saying. So how does that happen? Uh, these technologies have actually been around for a while. So, I mean, in a digital camera does face detection to focus on the face uh, so we can detect and track faces. Uh, Given that, then we the the other core technology is the ability to store these arbitrary regions separately. Typical systems can only deal with rectangular frames. All the all the data is in one frame. If the frames go by in time, we're able to store separately these arbitrary regions. And then on top of that, we have uh, encryption uh, technology that is designed specifically for this. So it's very fast. So we we have streaming video come in. We can encrypt these separate objects as they come in and store them as encrypted entities or transmit them as encrypted entities. So now we're instead of uh, single frames, which if we want to encrypt, we could only encrypt the whole thing, not just parts of it. Uh, we uh, we uh, can encrypt what we deem private and leave non-encrypted what we don't deem private. And what it essentially is, is it's, it gives you the ability to, uh, to encrypt just the private data in video surveillance. And, and then that's really the critical issue is that uh, video is indiscriminate. It captures all sorts of private, non-private data. We want to be able to secure or protect the private data. Most cases, this is face, face images, maybe body images, could be license plates. Um, and so this technology gives you the ability to encrypt these uh, arbitrary regions. Uh, so we detect those regions, we encrypt them. If an incident occurs, some high-level authority can can then uh, decrypt that data in case you do need to identify a person in, in video if an incident occurs. Uh, but under sort of the baseline default mode of operation, this data is protected. You've done the research phase. How close are we to uh, some sort of commercialization step? So yeah, the, the research is essentially done in, uh, at the University of Toronto so uh, it's hard to give an exact uh, timeline. Uh, we, we have some partners uh, and we're looking at uh, uh, first getting a software product and eventually it would be embedded in hardware. Uh, I can't really put a timeline on it. I would say within two years you will hope to actually see something that uh, we can really uh, deploy in, uh, in, uh, in, uh, in existing environments.